Hello and welcome to A Critical Dragon where I talk about narrative in film, television and in books. And today I want to talk about narrative pacing because pacing is one of those things that we talk about all the time and yet can be very hard to articulate what it is that we actually mean by it. Because quite often when we talk about pacing, we're thinking about it in negative terms about a book feeling slow, that it is dragging, that it is a slog. And what that is generally reflective of is not actually pacing in the novel, but our enjoyment of the section that we are reading. Because if we're enjoying something, we're fully engaged and we're immersed and we're reading through it. And this is great. And we fly through it. But if we're not engaged, if we're not enjoying it, if we're bored, then it can feel more laborious. And that is all about a personal reader experience that has nothing to do or may not have anything to do with the actual pacing of the novel and this can be hard to wrap our head around and I'll, I'll talk through some of the aspects of this but I think a brief analogy to film of which I'm I'm not an expert I'm middle amateurish sort of approach to this but if you think of a film that has lots of really long static shots where the camera is in one place and there's a long scene playing out that it's two people standing talking to each other and they're moving around slightly you're almost watching people on a stage that can feel long but if it is then intercut with so you have that as an establishing shot you see where everyone is they start talking and then it cuts to a close-up of the person's face as they are talking and then it cuts back to show uh, the scene again and then it cuts to the other person that they're talking to and then cuts to the first person and it's moving but that creates a feeling of dynamism that it is dynamic there is movement in how you're being told the story that you could have exactly the same scene where it is a long shot and you can see everything and the camera isn't moving and the dialogue happens in the same order the dialogue happens at the same pace but because it is one long continuous shot it can feel static and boring if it is intercut with different shots different camera angles close-ups uh far away shots different things going on on screen it can feel more interesting more engaging and therefore you don't get bored but the dialogue has been delivered at the same pace the action is happening at the same pace the uh, all the things are happening within the same amount of time and so when we think about time in a novel this is where it, it can get a bit weird because if you think you can measure time in how long it takes you to read a page, how long it takes you to read a chapter, how long it takes you to read the entire book, and then divide that by the number of words in the book, and that will give you the amount of time you spent on each word. And you could go, well, I read through this entire book, and I read it at my average speed, and therefore pacing didn't vary. But that's not what pacing is referring to. That's your reading speed. We can also think of the passage of time in books. Um, five chapters all dedicated to the events of a single day or one chapter dedicated to something that spans a year or a paragraph that notes the passage of a thousand years that's internal passage of time within the diegesis so time passing within the diegesis is not necessarily anything to do with pacing although it, it can have an effect so what we generally talk about in terms of pacing there are a couple of different aspects and the first is related to that whole thing about changing camera angles in a sequence. And I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't care about the prose. The prose doesn't matter. For the written medium, unsurprisingly, I'm going to say the prose actually matters a lot. And this is one of the things that people very rarely pick up on. If you have a lengthy paragraph of very long sentences, but the sentences are all kind of equally long. They're all roughly the same length. That can feel very boring to read. If you vary sentence length, you're varying the speed at which the reader is processing different bits of information. Even though they're still reading one word at a time, they're going, that's the end of one sentence. And then there's a short sentence and then another short sentence, which feels 
faster. It's like the opening shot being a long sentence and then intercutting with close-ups, short sentences, to give you that feeling of movement. And if you take a long passage of exposition and it is broken up with dialogue, dialogue breaks up the, the sequence of information being given to the reader. And because of that, that can make the scene feel like it is sped up. It's a way of affecting the pace at which the reader is perceiving the world and the information. We tend to read through a lot of short, snappy dialogue very, very quickly because it's, they said, they said, they said, and you're moving through each of these little short things. And then someone has a long rambling monologue, you know, maybe with my accent and <laughs> talking about pacing, but they have a long rambling monologue and that slows everything down, even though you're still reading the, the same words at the same pace and nothing has changed. The appearance of them on the page has changed. The point of view has remained fixed. Nothing is moving or going on, but our perception of it shifts. So one of the things that affects pacing is actually sentence length, sentence structure varying the sentence structure, varying the sentence length. A lot of short sentences in a row increase pacing. Long sentences following long sentences slow down pacing. And it's bizarre. And weirdly enough, while that is a sort of general rule, there are exceptions to this. And it's what I always say about narrative, that narrative is more complicated than we think. For instance, Usually if you want to convey a sense of a lot happening almost all at once, the, a, a sequence of actions happening very, very quickly, very rapidly, an author will deploy lots of very short sentences, short staccato sentences in a row. And that gives you a sense of lots of little things happening all in a row, very, very quickly. It gives you a sense of speed, a sense of the pace. Joe Abercrombie in the opening of was it The Blade Itself, has a sequence where it's a long sentence made up of subclauses because everything is happening within that one sentence and they're happening in sequence. So it's a, a different way of conveying lots of things happening, but all at the same time because they're all happening in the same sentence. Two different ways of approaching the same thing. But again, it's about pacing. It's about the perception of the information by the reader and how the reader is feeling about it. Exposition tends to slow down pacing. Long expository paragraphs tend to be slower than action sequences, and action sequences are typically intercut with lots of those staccato action sentences that I was talking about. And that's how you can vary pacing within a novel. But another approach is, if you think of one of those films where every single scene is a frenetic rush from action sequence to action sequence to action sequence it feels breathless it never slows down it doesn't give the audience time to catch a breath to think about what they have just witnessed to process that information and therefore the pacing feels rushed that there isn't a pause between these different action sequences it's just one after another after another and then you think of a, a film that does that sort of very heavy action well and balances it with moments of introspection or moments of quiet, moments of respite for the audience, something like John Wick, big extended action sequence. And then after it, there's a breather that it's a quiet scene. There's some dialogue, there's some exposition. There's the treatment of wounds or there's, well, now I'm gonna go and do this thing but suddenly the action stops and there's a period of time where the narrative slows down. It's not about action anymore. And we have the same thing happening in novels. If you have a big frenetic action sequence in the novel, lots of battle and, and fights and characters doing things all over the place and explosions, that can feel breathless unless there are moments of pause. And the way that an author, one of the ways that an author can bring in those moments of pause is having that moment of respite. So if you imagine a scene, there's a big battle and suddenly then one of the characters ducks behind something and sits down and is catching their breath and they talk to someone next to them. And we have a scene 
of quiet discussion where we're not in the middle of the action, where we can have character development, we can have dialogue, we can have someone explain something. And then the character goes, oh, right, back into it. And then they jump back into the action again. And we have the, the action sequence continues. But because the author had that moment of respite, they have altered the pacing. We've gone from frenetic action to something calmer, something um, more sedate. And that allows a reader to slow down, to take it all in, to think about what they have just experienced and to relax because you cannot maintain, or it is, cannot is probably too strong. It is exceptionally difficult to maintain a constant high pace because that becomes breathless. And this is the same with long, slow, contemplative novels that even in something that is long and slow and sedate and is meant to be gentle, there will still be moments where the pace will alter because if it was all at a same pace all the way through, the, almost a monotone of pace that it never altered, it would just feel humdrum instead of feeling breathless that you would with a frenetic action sequence all the way through, this could just feel a bit boring. And that's why even in long, slow novels, there will be moments of quick dialogue. There might be moments of brief action. There might be moments of something to interrupt and change the pacing. Now, that's all dealing with a lot of technical aspects. But ultimately, some of it comes down to narrative content. And I've already mentioned that exposition can feel slower than action. And that's because we are preconditioned uh, to think of action as moving things forward, progression in the story or the plot. And because of that, we think of exposition as slowing things down. And certainly that's how the majority of us perceive narrative when we read it. But if we have a long section of exposition, and we see this sometimes in fantasy with authors who get overly um, involved in describing their the intricate world or some fascinating aspect of their world that they're really proud of creating. And they can spend pages upon pages detailing this. And that can feel incredibly slow because you go, yeah, I got the gist of it. I don't need to know the nuts and bolts of every single aspect. I have the gist, can you please move on? I want to move on with the story or I want to move on to find out what's going on with these characters. So exposition can feel much slower than action and much slower than dialogue. At the same time, when you have an action sequence, dialogue can feel slower, it interrupts the action. So it's not, it's not necessarily all about, yes, you must have exposition followed by dialogue, followed by action, followed by exposition. There isn't a set sequence. It's understanding how a reader is going to perceive each of these different things. But I'd mentioned narrative content. And if a reader does not understand the value of something, if a reader is disinterested in what is being explored, that will lead to this feeling that this is boring. As soon as a reader feels that, as soon as a reader is disengaged from the narrative, that will slow down the entire process. That will make the entire narrative feel slower. And because of that, that's why so frequently we refer to certain, oh, that was a real slog. It, it was just so boring to get through until the exciting bit. And yet that's not actual pacing in the novel because that is so fundamentally based on our own personal interests. And yet that's the one we can most readily identify with because it's the one that we all experience. But word choice, word selection within a sentence, sentence length, paragraph length, all of those things are within an author's control in terms of pacing. Type of sentence, be it dialogue and exposition or action, those can affect pacing. Scene construction, having an action scene 
followed by something else. We know that action scenes tend to be faster, but quite often action scenes have less narrative content to them. There's less story or plot in them. It is action. Now, the best action sequences contain those things as well, but a lot of times action is about spectacle. And therefore that needs to be balanced with something slightly more narratively rich, which could be exposition. It could be dialogue. It could be a quiet scene. It could be someone mourning a companion. Something like that slows everything down and brings an emotion home to a reader where they were running on adrenaline before. So sentence length, paragraph structure, sentence structure. So, so word choice sentence length, sentence structure, paragraph length, paragraph structure, scene length, scene structure, type of scene. You can see how you can build up from the smallest blocks concerning the word choice. If it is lots of small, short, easy to understand words, we read them quicker. If they are longer, more complex words, we slow down. Sentences, short, abrupt sentences, we read quicker longer sentences, we slow down. Short paragraphs, we read faster than long paragraphs, hence a sense of pace. Short scenes, long scenes. You can see how on a technical level, the actual prose employed by the author, regardless of their style, will play with these things. And that will affect our perception of pacing. So I hope that this has explained pacing a little bit, or at least my interpretation of it. I know there are different ways of approaching pacing, but I hope this gives you some idea of different aspects that actually affect pacing. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your continued support, and I will see you in the next one.